part of Paris where Nicolas Germain is covering that uh, flame as it's laboriously trying to make its way around the French capital. Nick, tell us what you can see from where you are. Well, right now, I'm, I'm just a few meters away from the flame. Uh, minutes ago, it was the, the French judo champion, David Douillet, who had the flame. I'd say for the last uh, half hour, there have been a, f a few fewer demonstrations as we uh, left Paris and entered East Les Moulineaux, and people, the crowd is a bit further away behind barricades. And uh, so uh, initially, there were a lot of demonstrations in Paris near the Eiffel Tower. Every few meters, pro-Tibet demonstrators coming out, lying down in the street, and then violently removed by police. But now the last, uh, I'd say, half hour, it's been a bit calmer, and the crowds are further away, and it's harder for them to, for, for the protest demonstrators to come onto the street. Now, Nick, earlier we saw some pictures, some video pictures of incredibly violent clashes between the police forces and protesters. Uh, what can you tell us about that sort of violence and the police involvement on the ground? Well, uh, I saw that uh, several times. You see, you have one demonstrator alone who jumps out into the street. Immediately, you have four policemen who jump onto the demonstrator and uh, sometimes with violence put him aside and I also saw some uh, cameramen being hit by the police. All right, thank you very much, Nicolas Germain, reporting there on the ground uh, from uh, pa Paris, where the Olympic flame is desperately trying to make its way around the French capital. I'll turn now to International Affairs Editor Robert Parsons. Hello, Robert, who's here with us today. Mm -hmm. Robert, what does this mean on the global scale? This is the second day in a row that the flame's progress has been hampered in such a violent way. Well, it's becoming an increasing embarrassment for the uh, Beijing authorities and also for the International Olympic Committee. Uh, we had the demonstrations in, in uh, Greece just as it started off in its journey, as you say, in London yesterday, 37 arrests. Uh, today in Paris, several arrests already, and uh, things have still got a long way to go. And after this, it goes on to San Francisco. Who knows what will happen there? So it is becoming a global embarrassment for leaders around the world and focusing attention on what they're likely to do. We've seen already that the French government has become rather indecisive about what it should do contradictory remarks coming from different government ministers. Uh, there's no doubt that the longer this sort of thing goes on, uh, the more the games uh, are put under the spotlight, that the more pressure will be put on uh, governments around the world to take action of one kind or another. Now, whether, whether that means just criticizing the Chinese government or whether it means taking uh, decisive steps, as in the case of the Czech government, which decided it's not going to attend the opening ceremony of, of, of the Olympic Games, remains to be seen. But certainly, it's become an issue about which governments are seriously talking now. And that's not, not good for the Chinese authorities. All right. Well, what about China? Have they had any reaction so far to what has happened yesterday or today? Well, the, the Chinese authorities at the moment uh, are trying blithely to, to ignore the problem. They're talking about the, the, the harmonious journey uh, of the torch. And, it, of course, it's scarcely harmonious at this stage. And, and it's only just started. Uh, and they're hoping, of course, that information about the, what, what's happening around the world doesn't filter back to the Chinese population. But, but given... Uh, the role of the Internet in communications in China seems scarcely possible, despite the, uh, the best efforts of the Chinese authorities that they'll be able to do that. All right. Well, what about a potential boycott? Uh, we've mentioned that some world leaders are already stepping up to the plate. Could there be a boycott of, if not the entire Olympic Games, at least the opening ceremony? I think it's very unlikely that there will be a boycott of the Olympic Games uh, themsel themselves. But uh, it is beginning to look increasingly likely that governments will boycott the, the opening ceremony rather than, rather than be embarrassed by attending the, the, the ceremony itself and coming under domestic criticism. Uh, I think most of them will, will stay. Well, there is a chance that many will stay away. And already we have the Czech government deciding it will do that. Well all right. Tell us a bit about the future of the Olympic flame, where it goes from here. It's set to go to San Francisco tomorrow. Uh, is it likely that there will be the similar sort of protest tomorrow? I, I think it's more than likely that there will be similar uh, protests in, in uh, San Francisco tomorrow. Um, hard to predict, of course, but given what's happened in London and Paris, it seems extremely unlikely that something similar won't happen uh, in San Francisco. And after that, it's on, it's on its way to Buenos Aires. The same thing could happen there. Uh, and the longer this goes on, the more embarrassing it becomes for the Chinese uh, and for governments around the world who are being forced uh, to take some kind of action. All right. Thank you very much, Robert Parsons, International Affairs Editor here at France Van Cat. Thank you for watching. Stay with us. We'll be back in 20 minutes with more of that exclusive coverage of the Olympic flame making its way around the French capital.